So that's that's it for the the, the login part. And, and like we will go back to the tutorial. And at that point, now we're authorized. Before this, we weren't authorized, and that's why it would never fall into this if clause. And you just get that little message telling you to log in. So now that we know that we're lo we're logged in, we're going to get the the ID of an organization called Acme Widgets, which is what the admin user is associated with. So technically, even if you created a user, you probably couldn't use this uh, navigation tutorial very well because you don't have the role in the organizations associated. But the admin user does have access to the Acme Widgets organization, and we're going to get the distributor ID for that organization. And then we do a, a, a check, again, on the current user module of, of a privilege to make sure that the given user has access to the privilege that we're passing in. And so if we open up the IntelliSense here, you can see, get a better clue here. We're passing in the org ID, which is that Acme Widgets ID, along with a privilege, which we call a, technically a privilege code, which again, just like many things in Member Protect, you can customize. I decided to call this Manage Organizations, and you can see I got many others, Manage Users, and Manage Products, and Manage Homepage, and Manage whatever you might want to do, or whatever your, your application domain requires, you can create privileges and roles associated around those for access purposes. So to show you where the organization and privilege information was set up, we got to go back to that reset button, which is basically our install routine. We got to go find the, the admin user who's right here. And we can see that we assigned him the organization of distributor ID. And the distributor is going to be that Acme widgets. So up here, we've got that's the manufacturers Acme widgets. And if we go down, we talk about um, the roles, these are the default roles, and one of the default roles is the administrator. And in that role, we've got privileges. So you can see this gets a little complicated, but if you if you think about your Windows system and all the, the roles and privileges that you can do in the system, it's, it's very similar to that. So the administrator role has access to these, or has associated with it these these different privileges, such as managed organizations, managed users, products, homepage, and reports. And then obviously go back down to admin, and we've assigned the role administrator to the admin user. And then some of this other stuff is risk-based authentication, which we'll come to later. So go back to this page. Now we know, technically, yeah, the admin user does have access to Acme Widgets, because that's its organization. And within that organization, it does have access to all of these privileges. And so because of that, when we come to the page, we have access to these different links. In a real production system, I want to stress again that these links, wherever they take you, you probably have to do a, another check again on those privileges to make sure that somebody didn't just type it up in the in the URL bar up here. So again, you have to be thinking security. Uh, if, you, if we develop web applications on a daily basis, you probably already are. I want to keep stressing the security aspect of this because we're not focusing on it in the tutorials, and I just want to make that obvious. So. To further illustrate that, we'll go back. We're going to log off. Now we're logged off, and we're going to log in with somebody else. And what other user do we have? Let's go look at, I forget. We had a manager. How about we, we're going to go log in as a reporter, because I don't think he had access to that navigation stuff. So log in as a reporter. We're now logged in. We go into roles and privileges, and he only has access to manage reports. He doesn't have access to all those other links that we saw earlier. And the reason being is the code in there, he must only have access to the manage reports. Privilege, obviously, because he's a reporter. He doesn't have access to these other privileges. So these must have failed. This check privilege on managed organizations and users of products and homepage did not, fa they failed for him. And if we go back to the default page where we do our installation routine, we can see that because the reporter has who's been assigned a role of report manager. If you look at that, where's that role? Um, right here. For the report manager role, the only privilege that's added that, that's associated with it is the managed reports, whereas the administrator had all of these. So you can see that it only got a few, or one of those links versus the admin who had all access to all the links. So that, in a nutshell, is, is, illustrates pretty nicely um, the control that you have as a developer with regards to the roles and privileges in a member protect system. Again, you have access or you have the ability to manage the roles and their names. You have you have the ability to name the privileges um, that are in your system and what roles might have those privileges. In fact, if you wanted to get really fancy, 
you could create entire UIs to allow you to create roles and delete roles and edit roles and, and add and delete and edit privileges right here on, on a web page. So that way maybe you have an, a pretty large uh, application and you might have an administration section where you administrators can actually create and, and edit and manage roles and privileges on the website itself. Member Protect would allow that. There's nothing, again, it's, it's all about flexibility. You can use as little or as much of all of the functionality that Member Protect provides to you. Um, we, don't, we don't guide you, and so in, in that, you get a lot of, of room to breathe. Um, so this is a very simple way of using roles and privileges, but uh, it can get definitely more advanced, and, and it can support many situations where you've got websites with dozens of different sections and parts of the application where you only want certain users to be able to access reports and other users to only be able to access accounting information and administrators access everything or maybe you have a super administrator that has access to things that even the regular administrators don't have. That's all completely possible with roles and privileges. So that's about it for the uh, roles and privileges demo. Like I said, this is a very simple version of it, but you can see that it, uh, I think it illustrates the points pretty well.